So today we're going to have a look at how to plan and answer an extended mark question in a psychology exam. I'm going to be looking particularly at the cognitive approach and I've chosen a eight mark question um, to give you an example of how we can plan and answer an extended uh, eight mark question. So before we start, a couple of tips really. So uh, we'll, we'll obviously be looking at an eight mark question and there are some important things to remember when answering an extended mark question. Firstly, the majority of the eight mark questions in the exams will involve A01 marks, which is description, and A03 marks, evaluation. Uh, these will normally be broken down um, into four marks for description and four marks for evaluation. Therefore, your answer really does need to be balanced. So you do need to include an equal number of descriptive and an equal number of evaluative points as well. Now, your evaluation points, your AO3 points, are normally a little bit more detailed than the descriptive points, okay? Because they'll involve the use of studies, which you'll need to explain the findings of and how they um, either support or go against the study or the theory that you are evaluating. Uh, so it is important in the evaluations to use examples um, of supporting studies. So do learn some supporting studies to help you evaluate. Um, and really finally, always produce a plan for an eight mark, even if it takes you one minute, uh, two minutes in the exam. It does make a big difference whether you plan or not. So I'm going to have a look at a question which I've chosen from the cognitive approach. Um, so we'll have a look at the question, break it down and have a look at how we go about planning this question. So the question I have chosen is evaluate the working memory model by Badley and Hitch in 1974 for eight marks. So uh, a question like this, it says evaluate. But the question is really asking you to do both. It's asking you to describe and evaluate. So a little bit misleading, but there are A01 descriptive marks available here. And obviously for description and for evaluation marks for describing and evaluating the working memory model. So in a question like this, you would uh, describe the model itself and then you would use two strengths and maybe two weaknesses of the model to evaluate it. So what I'm going to do is I've produced a plan already. So I'm going to break down the plan into bullet points and go through that. So let's talk about the description, how we go about planning. So anytime I always plan um, an extended mark, I always uh, divide it into um, the two marks, so A01 and two A03. So you've got four marks for A01 and four marks for A03. And it just helps you to organize um, your answer a little bit better. So firstly, the description, the working mom memory model itself is obviously made of three components. So you've got your central executive, you've got your visual spatial sketch pad, and you've got your phonological loop. Okay, so these are the three main components of the working memory model. So, so really what your question is asking you to do is really to describe these components and also their functions. So once you've described um, each of these components in detail, okay, you'll, you'll gain a, a couple of two or three marks just for the description of these components. You could then also go on to talking about the episodic buffer itself. And now the episodic buffer was added in 2001 to the model. Um, so you would obviously go about describing what the episodic buffer is and what its function is. Um, you know, for example, to temporarily store the information and um, process it by other subsystems. So you need to really be explaining what the episodic buffer does and why it was added to the model. So all of that would form the AO2 description part of the answer. OK, so that's four marks for that. Then moving on to the evaluation. Now, your evaluation would be, um, I've chosen two strengths and two weaknesses. That's the best sort of tactic really because you've been showing the examiner that you can give strengths and you can critically evaluate the model as well. So the first point is relating to uh, dual task experiments. So Baddeley, I'm going to use Baddeley's study. 
and dual task experiments. Remember, dual task experiments are those that require participants to perform uh, two tasks simultaneously. So they might be using two different senses, for example. Um, and this really provides evidence for a working memory model because it shows that we do actually have two separate stores of information which are processed differently. So again, that's uh, evidence. So obviously by using a researcher, name of a study, this will give you, um, give you a lot more um, evidence. You've also got case studies that you can use, particularly in the cognitive approach. So you might have come across a few case studies that you can use. Uh, I'm going to use the case study of KC, which you um, may, have, may have studied. So KC's uh, case was, he was involved in a motorcycle accident and as a result suffered from enterocardial amnesia, which again did um, leave an impact on his uh, memory. So I'm using this as a strength in the mod in this uh, answer because Casey's model really shows that um, visual information is actually processed separately to verbal information because one part of his brain was obviously damaged more than, the, than another. So when one part of the brain remains intact and another doesn't, you know, what that shows is evidence that there are separate stores of memory in the brain so you could use that as an evidence of strength um talking about weaknesses now weaknesses you can actually evaluate some of the studies you've used previously in the evaluation or you can uh, evaluate the general research that's been used so i'm going to go for a general point first so i'm going to say that the model is based on lab experiments which involve dual, ex dual task experiments. And one of the problems with lab experiments is that they are artificial and they're conducted in an artificial setting, which um, makes them lack ecological validity. So again, um, it's not a realistic uh, representation, really. So for that reason, it's a criticism. And then another weakness that you could use is I'm going to go back to the case of Casey that I used earlier. So on the one hand, I can say Casey's case study is a strength. However, I can come back to it and say, however, majority of um, cases in cognitive psychology are obviously case studies, evidence is case studies. Um, and these are obviously unique individuals. They don't have anything common or similar to other cases. So for that reason, uh, case studies is a weakness because it really does limit our generalizability um, in terms of, you know, how applicable it is to the target population. So we can use that as a weakness. OK, now um, your evaluation points will be more detailed than your A01 descriptive points. And that's not to say that you don't need to write much in your AO1 description points. They do still need to be detailed, but your AO3 points will need to have a lot more weight, weighting to them, a lot more evidence, but a bit more detail um, to get you those full marks. OK, so there's, there's your plan really for this um, answer for this question. So do have a go um, and try practicing planning before you do, you know, answer any questions.